Good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. It is Etep Wakuyan right here with the premiere of Etep Wakuyan's Daily Blitz. We'll give peeps a few minutes to get in here before we start. Um, we are going to be doing this, ladies and gentlemen, on a daily basis. Uh, after this week, um, this week will kind of, I, I premiered it today because. I have a uh, I have a wedding um, out of town, and this is very um, easy for me to do. Come on here, uh, stream for a half hour, uh, you know, throw down some uh, throw down some news stories for you all, and we uh, we will go with that. Uh, I have three news stories today to feature. We'll let some people get into the chat here. Uh, if you're here in the chat, just drop me a comment. Let me know you're here. Uh, we will get moving. Here I am. Uh, take the cover off. There I can. I went uh, as you can see. I went and got the. Uh, I said I was getting the beard trimmed up today. The camera's in focus, and uh, and I did. Uh, no, the earrings didn't go anywhere. I'm just uh, oh, wrong ear. I'm I'm rocking the. Uh, they're hiding behind my earbuds. I've got the diamonds on today. Um, getting all warmed up for the wedding. I'm getting I had to get everything right. Uh, make the beard look right. Yeah, we went and got that. Uh, like I said, got her got her trimmed up today. Lined up sideburns faded in and everything wanted to uh gotta look sharp i look sharp for loudy's wedding uh there we go adjust the camera shake that around a little bit uh brutal morning woods there what's up brother hail to you brutal morning wood all right we uh we're getting some peeps in the chat salvador says why are you gay uh, <laughs> i love you sal i love you so much man um oh dude uh let me see i don't have i need to get that clip uh, I do have the old trusty. <laughs> Gay! I guess we uh, we don't have an intro for this show yet. There's there's literally no introduction. Uh, we just go right into the uh, right into the show. Um, I mean, I guess I, I could put something together moving forward. Uh, we're gonna call this the Daily Blitz. Uh, literally, it will be uh, anywhere from twenty to thirty minutes. Uh, we'll be doing this, except. On Thursdays moving forward, Thursdays will all be, that will be the morning show. We'll have the full on, you know, two, three hour, or two hour morning show. Um, it doesn't need one. No, you know, I, I kind of wanted to put like a little 10 second one together, but I was like, eh, whatever. We'll just go right into the show uh, because it's a shorter stream. And uh, we do have the stream tonight going rogue. It will be a little bit different. Like I said, um, have some different, uh, different people on and we'll be, uh, We'll be talking about our uh, our departed pal, the Groovinator. Um, but right now, I, I will uh, here. I'll do this. This will this will be uh, this will be my way of saying good morning to everybody. This is courtesy of Tony, and I, I couldn't love this more. It's so perfect. Who's ready for a little little music interlude? Here we go. There we go, right there. Vassy, good morning, darling. Uh, Sal says, especially if it's only 20 minutes, a lot of YouTube metrics. So if you have an intro, people just click the next video because they're impatient. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sal. I appreciate that. Sal knows. Sal runs a lot of live streams. He did. He was killing it during Iconicon. Uh, go over and check out Two Cents Toys. Sal, you're a mod, brother. Drop your link in the chat. Um, I, have, I, I want you to do that. If you're wrenched on my channel, if you're wrenched on my channel, you can put your link in the chat. If I gave you a wrench, uh, that's there not only for you to help me during the live chat, but um, that is that is there for you to promote your channel as well. Uh, we grow together, we rise together. That is uh, that is the Phantom Collective and Rogue Entertainment way, baby, and uh, that's what we do. Uh, Vassy, uh, justice for uh, intros. No, Sal, you're 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 my brother, man. You your channel rocks. Uh, Sal is, like I said, he's one of the best toy channels I've seen. I don't just say that because he's my brother. I say that because I love the dude and he puts out a quality product. He's consistent. Uh, he's basically like Cal Ripken when it comes to releasing videos. Uh, dude is the, the, the epitome of consistency, uh, which in YouTube is paramount to the development of your channel. And that's why Sal just crossed over 2,000 subscribers, so... Love you, man. Congratulations. Uh, Eddie he threw Vassy's link in there. This, this is Sal, man. This is the... Yeah, there you go. Subscribe to Vassy. Vassy, you're up to 124 now. Um, I, I, got to, uh, I got to listen a little bit uh, to your review. I didn't get to finish the episode 5 Loki uh, review yet, darling, but uh, I'm going to make it through that and the rest of your videos. Loudy's in the house. Loudy, look, bro. 
it's all it's all uh it's all cleaned up man um I'll have to show you guys a before and after. It's it's actually scarier than than what it uh, what it looks like. But let's get in to these video. These see, I'm used to doing the uh, the full on. Hey, I'm going to talk for three hours live stream. No, we can't do that. Turn the camera off. Let's share a screen. Let's get into our first article. You came for the news. I, I said, give me thirty minutes. I'll give you the news. So here we go. We'll start out over with our good friends at Bounding into Comics. Uh, this is Greg Berlanti, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CW and Arrowverse producer Greg Berlanti signs a new exclusive deal with Netflix. I didn't really get a chance to get into this story yet, uh, but I wanted to kind of go into it with fresh eyes with you guys. Uh, this came out yesterday. JB Augustine, big shout out to JB over there. Vassie says I lose a sub every stream. Same here. But then, like, I'll, I've been going back and forth between 742 and 743 for the last couple days. Uh, so no net gains. Yes, it's CW, darling. Uh, let's get into this. Here we are. Uh, Greg Berlanti, the executive producer behind the CW slate of DC shows as Arrow and The Flash. Yeah, let's... <laughs> yeah, Arrow's, Arrow's gone. Um, stop trying to ride those coattails, you know, rest on those laurels. Uh, Flash is horrible. And, and Flash is adding another partnership outside of his current $400 million deal, TV deal with Warner Brothers to an already stacked workload. Deadline is reporting that the prolific executive producer and his producing partner, Sarah Schechter, whose name is credited on most of his TV shows as well, have signed an exclusive first look deal with Netflix. The deal, the deal, the deal won't get in the way of the duo's dramatic series projects as it strictly concerns feature films pitched by Berlanti Schechter Films for which Netflix has first refusal. As if you thought it couldn't get any worse uh, with Greg Berlanti's TV shows, apparently now the, film, the films are not safe either. Uh, in the joint statement, Schechter and Berlanti said... They were looking forward to making a broad range of emotional, entertaining, and impactful stories for a massive global audience that Netflix has. Uh, let me translate to you what they're actually saying is they're going to make a bunch of woke garbage tier bullshit that the uh, normies and idiots will gobble up. That's basically what they're saying. Uh, oh, look, it's Candace Patton on Team Flash. This is the thing that pissed me off. I don't mind Candace Patton on The Flash. I never did. I think she's, as far as her acting goes... Uh, not a fan. She's not that great of an actress. She's serviceable. Um, she has limited range, just what I've seen in The Flash. She's beautiful. She is absolutely beautiful. She's gorgeous. Um, but Iris West was a redhead, and of course we see what happened. Like I said, I never minded her as Iris. What, what I minded was when she's like, when Barry's like, but I'm The Flash. She's like, no, Barry, we're The Flash. Um... Bitch, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You are not the Flash. Uh, Barry Allen is the Flash. Loudy. I usually just avoid things that have to do with the CW. Brutal Morningwood. CW equals can't watch. You are not far from uh, correct, Brutal Morningwood. Uh, let's get into the rest of this article, though. Netflix is the undisputed king of streaming. Even with all the competitors out there today, including the Warner Media owned HBO Max, globally, the streaming service's vast reach encompasses over 200 million subscribers and provides them with access to some of the most talked about content. Berlanti is best known for his sundry DC adaptations, but he's also been a writer producer on Dawson's Creek, Everwood, starring Chris Pratt, HBO Max as the flight attendant, and Blind Spot. He had previously dipped his toe into Netflix waters with the hits You. And the Archie Comics inspired Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I've never seen either of those. Um, man, Melissa Joan Hart. Is that still Melissa Joan Hart? I'll say I thought so. She looks good. Uh, however, conversely, his dabbles in cinema have been met with mixed success. Projects he produced, such as Pan and Green Lantern, have tended to flop. But Love, Simon which he directed, performed well enough globally with critics to receive a spin-off drama on Hulu, Love, Victor. Uh, Berlanti's next two pictures awaiting release are Free Guy, starring Ryan Reynolds, and My Policeman, starring singer Harry Styles and The Crown's Emma Corrin. Elsewhere on streaming, he has his hands in the HBO Max Green Lantern series, currently in production. At the time, the deal was reported... There was no word on what potential projects Berlanti could be working on for the streaming titan. 
Uh, are you curious what to see what Greg Berlanti makes in conjunction with Netflix? Uh, so there's there's the story. Uh, so now my uh, it's that's must read TV. That's awesome. I would rather watch a marathon on Monday Night Raw than anything on CW. Uh, I'd rather I, I'd, I'd rather watch WCW Thunder from 2000 than anything on the CW, including Batwoman. But I watch Batwoman because it makes my brain bleed, and you people love that. Um, heathens. Anyway, uh, do I think this is going to work out for Berlanti? Meh. I am kind of excited to see Free Guy. I didn't know that he really had that much involvement in that. Uh, or that he was really involved in the Ryan Reynolds, uh, Ryan Reynolds, fucking Green Lantern, in the Green Lantern series for HBO Max, which I was kind of looking forward to because I am, even though I didn't get it for Justice League because I really didn't care that much, um, I want to check out this Green Lantern series. I was stumped there for a moment. Um, let's see. Let me watch Russo booking WCW over CW. Absolutely, uh, Loudy. Absolutely. Um, I want to, speaking of DC though, before we move on to the next story really quick here, uh, I might sound far away from the mic. That's because I'm walking across the room. Um, I wanted to show you guys this, uh, Trey got this for his birthday, um, the other day and, uh, I had a chance to read it and not read the entire book already, but, um, Jared from the wrestling podcast, uh, showed up at Trey's birthday cause he, he only lives like 20 minutes away from me. So we invited him up, and uh, he bought this for Trey, The Definitive Guide to Characters of the DC Universe. You would not believe how many ethnic characters and female characters there are in here. Uh, so, like I said, I don't have a Marvel. Uh, that looked really good. Here, here's the top of my head. Um, yeah, that is, it's in here. Let me do it justice uh, and kind of flip just through some of them. Um, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous, uh, it's a gorgeous book. It really is. Um, you can just see some of the, just some of it right there. And, and it gives great detail. Uh, it's like, it'll show first appearance. Uh, if the characters passed away, if they're a villain or a hero, their real name, uh, height, weight, their base, eyes, hair, uh, special powers and abilities. It is so cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, Trey, uh, Trey won't appreciate that. For you know, I mean, he likes it. He's like, because the pictures, and, and I've read him some of it. Uh, you know, we were kind of glossing through it the other night, but yeah, it's uh, it's very cool. Uh, and Jared, Jared got him a 1992 uh, Michael Keaton Batman Returns. Uh, like it's like 14 inch tall Batman, and uh, like a bat mask, but it's sunglasses. It's got like you know sunglass lenses in the eyes. He dug that. So he, the kid, uh, got so much stuff for his birthday. Hang on a second, I gotta show you something else. One of his, it's right here in front of me. Uh, one of his classmates, uh, her and her parents, I'm kind of friends with their parents. And uh, so they came out and they know he's getting into Nerf guns. So they got him a a, a Nerf uh, Dino Blaster, which is, uh, it's got a 10 round mag. Uh, really, uh, really, really kind of neat. And, uh, you know, it's got optics, you know, optics. And uh, yeah, you can, you can slide. Uh, I'm not having good. I, I just point it right at myself here. Really, a uh, really good gun handling, uh, firearm handling skills here. But yeah, you can you can kind of flip this up. I just trimmed my nails. You can't, but you can see if there's a round, a round in there, and you got extra space for your rounds here. Uh, it, it's it's really neat. Uh, doesn't really uh, doesn't really stink. Vassy's jealous of that. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sick actually. Um, and he's got his Gatling gun, so. Um, a weapon on YouTube canceled. Yeah, we are going to uh, we are going to have uh, a Nerf blaster war because I don't know if I showed you guys. He got a uh, he got a Gatling gun and he's got Han Solo's blaster too. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a Nerf gun war with those. Uh, but let's get on to the next story here uh, before I because uh, I don't want to run over my time in the first episode, which I'm probably going to, but that's okay. That's uh, my show. No, I will uh, I will keep to time. Uh, morning, Chris Underwood. Uh, we're going to go over here to movie web. Story number two, Venom vs. Spider-Man. Kevin Feige won't rule it out. Uh, this is by John uh, Fuji. John Fuji La. Fuji La La. Venom and Spider-Man could happen anytime, says Marvel boss Kevin Feige. I, uh, I, I've lost a lot of faith in Kevin Feige. That's just a cool picture. Um, I've lost a lot of faith in Feige, especially after the uh, all the Black Widow stuff. Um, uh, it has. Uh, there's. Wait. I gotta. I gotta give it. I gotta give it to Chris Underwood. There's a two sweet for you right there, bro. Uh, but let's get back to this article right here. Um, yeah. 
So let me pop this over here. All right. Uh, audiences may one day see the two Toms, Holland and Hardy, H squared, come face to face in a Venom versus Spider Man movie, says Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. During a recent interview, Feige responded to the idea of Sony and Marvel's worlds colliding, saying simply that he wouldn't rule anything out on a potential crossover. Uh, that would be leaving money on the table if they did that. Uh, I don't want to talk about rumors or speculation on what could happen or couldn't happen as it relates to characters Marvel Studios hasn't brought to the screen yet. But I will say that I've always said, having been at Marvel Studios for 20 years, I wouldn't dismiss anything. I wouldn't rule anything out. Uh, that would be a, a, fool's, uh, a fool's move to rule out Venom versus Spider-Man when Venom is a Spider-Man character. You know what I mean? Uh, and to be able to cross those over wouldn't uh and not do it doesn't make sense uh pursuing paranormal what's up my brother uh hail to you man welcome uh cody will be joining us this evening on the uh on the uh groove memorial stream uh on, it'll be uh on you know hosting on my rogue entertainment show uh tonight and and we talked a little bit about that during uh Rogue Squadron last night. Uh, while his comments are a long way from confirming anything, the very fact that Kevin Feige does not rule anything out is exciting enough. Surely, Venom can be can only be kept away from Spider-Man for so long. Feige went on to say that a lot of rumors fans have seen online could well be things that come to pass eventually. Um, when and how and where remains to be seen. Any rumor you read online could happen any time between tomorrow and never. Uh, so you see... There is always that uh, that Kevin Feige. Uh, <laughs> there's always that Kevin Feige. Um, uh, you know, uh, sleight of hand, the verbal sleight of hand uh, is as a good friend of mine, Salvador says, uh, verbal judo. Um, Angelus Draven's in the house. He says, looking forward to watching some of that tonight at work. Um, Loudy says, okay, I realize I can't do this in homework. I'm gonna bounce. Love y'all. Love you, bro. We'll see you. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. I've, I, I have never been able to say that, Coach, but I will see you tomorrow. Um, yeah. Uh, Chris Underwood said, Eric Louder back, gave it too sweet vast. He said, Feige bullshits for Jesus. The man sits on a throne of lies. Uh, darling, you are absolutely, uh, absolutely right. Um, it, that's, that's about it. He does. Uh, Feige is... Feige is a snake oil salesman, uh, although he, he has produced some stuff. You know what I mean? Um... Uh, He's not the genius everyone thinks he is, though. He's he's just as fallible as anybody else in in Hollywood, um, and he's really showing his hand with what they're doing with Marvel now. Um, let's see here where are we at with time. We are over oh, at twenty four minutes. All right, uh, we have to take about five minutes off there because YouTube always starts like at six minutes. Like I will go live and they'll say we've been live for six minutes. So we actually have uh, about we'll say we'll say ten, probably ten minutes or so. But anyway. Uh, Feige's comments do, in fact, go promisingly well with the recent comments made by Sony Motion Picture Group president Sanford Panich, who even suggested that a plan is already in place for Venom and Spider-Man to meet on the big screen. There actually is a plan. I think now maybe it's getting a little more clear for people where we're headed, and I think when No Way Home comes out, even more will be revealed, Panich said. The great thing is we have this very access, excellent, excellent, we have this accident relationship. Excellent re, words are hard. That's what she said. Excellent relationship with Kevin. There's an incredible sandbox there to play with. Wouldn't it be play in? Uh, we want those MCU movies to be absolutely huge because that's great for us and our Marvel characters. I think that's the same thing on their side. But we have a great relationship. There's lots of opportunities. I think that are going to happen. Um, this sounds like maybe part wishful thinking, uh, part conjecture on the part of Panich. Um, while I do think, sip of water for the working man. While I do think that they will eventually cross over, uh, I think that Marvel is going to be very hesitant to give Sony any modicum of control uh, in this relationship if the do if the two do cross over. And normally I don't side with Marvel, but I will say that because of Avi Arad still being uh, involved on the Sony side, I, I believe anyway, um, I would say that would be good. Uh, because we all know what happened last time Avi Arad got his hands on Venom. 
uh, yeah, I don't need to bring up Topher Grace, uh, Eric Foreman's Venom, do I? I don't think so. Uh, let's wrap this article up, though. While little is currently known about the certain elements of the plot of Spider-Man No Way Home, well, there's been a ton of leaks, we do know that Benedict Cumberbatch will return to Sorcerer Supreme, which is funny. They'll allow Benedict Cumberbatch to come in and nerf Spider-Man and, and make him look like a little ineffectual fool, but God forbid that he white-splain or mansplain anything to Wanda. God forbid that because... It would totally ruin the character of Wanda if a white male was in her show and and gave her any information about her powers. Even though he's the Sorcerer Supreme, the most powerful sorcerer there is, uh, can see the future. But you know what? You know, fine. It's fine. It's all fine. You know, it's all fine. White males can't do it. All they cared about was toy sales. Absolutely. Uh, did I say hail Jay Lee? If I didn't hail Jay Lee, uh, Tom Holland will get acted out of all. Scenes with Hardy, he doesn't have much presence. No, you're you're Vassy. I, I I I agree to a certain extent. I think Holland can have a good presence if they would actually let him, uh, but they they insist on making him so just needy. He's just needy all the time, uh, and they don't really give him. I don't know. I, I don't think they give him much agency. I really I really don't. I just feel that it's it's kind of weird. Um, all right, so here we at. Uh, Doctor Strange, and he will join Tom Holland's Peter Parker on his latest adventure. The character is said to be taking on the mentor role previously held by Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark, with the movie looking more and more likely to be following on the upcoming Doctor Strange sequel, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, and throwing Peter Parker and his chums into the multiverse. Opening up the MCU to the multiverse would certainly be the easiest way to bring Tom Hardy's Venom into the fray. Well, they don't really need to because Venom exists on the west coast right now which is kind of odd that they've never heard of this but hey you know for now venom has more than enough to deal with upcoming sequel to venom let there be carnage finds hardy reprising his role of eddie brock investigative journalist we know what's going on i am stoked about this movie i loved venom and i'm really looking forward to uh, venom let there be carnage especially with uh with shriek uh, they do give him shit writing draven they absolutely do um, I, I do. I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing what they do with Shriek uh, on screen, and uh, and Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy is, yeah. Especially since they fixed his hair. But what do I know about hair? Uh, so that'll pretty much wrap this article up. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts in the comments or questions uh, for me? Uh, if you do, go ahead and drop them in there now. Uh, I'll give you a couple seconds here as I queue up this next article. We are going to be talking next about Don Cheadle and his Emmy nominations. We're at 29 minutes, which means we're actually like 24 minutes. So we will, uh, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll queue up this next article. So what do, you, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? I think we should queue up this next article. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! I can't go a day without playing that. I just <laughs> think of Jim Ross as Skeletor to me is just it's it's hilarious. Um, here we go. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I love you, Parrothead. You're hilarious. Um, it would have to be a chicken. It would have to be a chicken. And dinosaurs were nothing but big chickens. They had feathers, for God's sakes. Raptors were like big ass birds. But everybody wants to treat them like mini. They want to treat them like mini fucking T Rexes. I don't know. All right. Am I sharing this right now? I am. <laughs> oh, this is the beauty of live, ladies and gentlemen. We're already at 30 minutes on the timer, which means we're about 25, 26. Let's uh, talk about this. Don Cheadle reacts to Emmy nomination for a 98 second Falcon and Winter Soldier appearance. I think this is the most. Re can, I, can I just say. Um, and, and I saw this comment made, and I kind of have to echo the statement. It must be nice to get nominated for an Emmy for being black. <laughs> because what other reason do they have to nominate Don Cheadle for an Emmy for this for? He was not that impactful. In a show full of trash writing, uh, garbage messaging, uh, preachy, woke nonsense, uh, racism against uh, you-know-who, uh, it was ridiculous. It really was. Is this a joke? No, it is not, Vassy. Uh, Don Cheadle is nominated for an Emmy. Let's. Uh, this will be our last article of the morning. Don Cheadle is a great actor. He's also one of Hollywood's all-time nice guys. After 11 Emmy nominations and no wins, he surely deserves a little love. 
He got it Tuesday with an unexpected Emmy nomination for his 98-second cameo in the premiere episode of Marvel's Disney Plus series Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'd forgotten it was the first episode, too. Uh, Cheadle was as surprised as anyone tweeting, Thanks, well-wishers, sorry, haters. Agreed. I don't really get it, haters. I don't really get it either. Or I don't know what that's supposed to be. Is that... I, I'm not even going to conjecture what that's supposed to mean. Um, I, I don't... Is that supposed to be haters? With an emoji? Uh, I don't know, but I'm not even going to guess. Um, I don't really get it either, but on we go. Some people compared Cheadle's nomination to Judy Dench's Oscar win in 99 for her scene-stealing eight-minute turn in Shakespeare in Love, accepting her award. Dench said, I feel for eight minutes on the screen, I should only get a little bit of him. Cheadle's reaction to his outstanding guest actor in a drama series nomination was similarly self-effacing. The actor's appearance on the show's premiere episode created added continuity for fans of the Marvel movies. The first, the actor first appeared as Colonel James Rupert Rhodey Rhodes and his alter ego War Machine in 2010's Iron Man 2. He has been a steadying presence for fans and Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark through seven films. In his 98 seconds on Falcon, Cheadle's Rhodey Rhodes has a pivotal conversation with Anthony Mackie and Sam Wilson about becoming Captain America. It's a quiet moment as far as superhero scripts go, but it's freighted with all the history and baggage of the characters the characters have from the Avengers films. There's also an undercurrent of the significance of a black man taking up, uh, of course there is, uh, Captain America's iconic shield. God bless it. I was trying to X out of it. Apparently I cannot X out. I can, apparently I cannot X out of this. Um, as Rhodey says to Sam in parting as they look at the shield in the star-spangled costume, a new day, brother. Um, and that's the end of that article. Uh, so, so my thoughts on that. He just reminded us Falcon. He just reminded us, uh, Draven, I'm going to highlight this. He just reminded us that Falcon is black, so stunning and brave. Uh, Vassy Reviews says, I am so confused, but why? Um, that is basically my sentiment as well. Uh, I don't understand why, uh, like I said, he's basically... I mean, can we just say he is he is getting nominated for this because he's black and because of the tone of the show and the messaging. Um, I hated Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I, I hated it. I hated it. Uh, the most redeeming things in that show were Walker, uh, played by Wyatt Russell, um, Zemo, played by Daniel Bruhl, and partially Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Because I've had a crush on her since like I don't know 1990. Uh, when I, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I just I hated the show. It was so like especially that speech at the end. What really put it over the edge was that speech at the end. You know, do better. Shut up, shut up. Like we know, we know. There's people out there that are assholes. What, what do you? Thanks, Marvel. Thanks, Marvel. Gee golly, Willikers. You know. Um, if they're given cameos, Emmy nods, where's Julie Louis Dreyfus's nomination? Boo. That's right, Vassy. That's absolutely right. Morning, Darius Munchausen. Um, we're actually getting ready to wrap up here, folks. Um, uh, it has been almost 30 minutes, uh, total. Um, but my, my final thoughts on the stories we've covered today, um, as far as this one goes, uh, you know, Cheadle's, Cheadle's being a good sport about it though. I will say that. And I, I like Don Cheadle. Uh, he's, he's being a good sport about this. Um, you know, like the article said, very self-effacing, which is nice to see. Uh, but yeah, Marvel needs to do their, t uh, collector express hail, uh, says Marvel needs to take their own advice and do better. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's really messed up. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's, I don't know how many Emmys it's nominated for. I didn't look it up. But uh, we can talk about that later tonight on the stream. Uh, as we'll be covering, you know, we'll be talking about some some current events and things too uh, while we're, you know, memorializing, uh, you know, is that the in memoriam of Groovinator? Uh, only 15 minutes for me, but I'll take but I'll take it to be with you all fine peeps this morning. Thank you for being here, Chris. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys um, and gals. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for joining us for the initial uh, episode of the Thirty Minute Blitz. Etepokuian's uh, you know uh, Thirty Minute Blitz uh, right here. 
um, the initial episode. Like I said, tomorrow morning you get a full morning show, uh, but nothing else until Monday night uh, when I come back because I am uh, I am going to uh, Loudy's wedding this weekend. So I will be uh, I will be out of town, and uh, the way I'm structuring content now, I did not uh, I did not get uh, anything uh, recorded. Like I said, moving forward, uh, we're going to be doing the 30 minute blitz daily, except for Thursdays, because that will be your full on morning show. You'll still get I know I'm streaming a lot. You're going to get uh, you'll still get single release videos, but this is my rationale for this. I have a six year old son. Uh, he's off for the summer and. It takes me six, seven hours to produce a video, all right? I want to spend time with my son, and I want to spend time with you all. Uh, so to stream for 30 to 40 minutes, you know, uh, a morning for me, uh, cover some articles, get to inter- inter- uh, get to interact with you, you gentlemen and ladies in the chat, um, and then still do the night streams. You're still going to get going in raw, going rogue, um, you know, the, the morning show. So, yes. And we will, uh, and we will be, uh, we will still be releasing videos too. And, Na- and Nano Reaper, I apologize, I've got to get that video edited. Uh, the Prodigal Son finale, it's not, it'll get like ten views. But I-, I felt bad, I recorded it with Nano Reaper. I'm going to release that too as well. So a lot coming up on the channel. Uh, Angelus Draven, Chris Underwood, too sweet. Uh, Darius Munchausen, Vassy reviews. Alec Arcanes. Oh, thank you. It was nominated for five Emmys. Wow, that's that seems excessive for a show that was so shite. Uh, Collector Express. Uh, let's see who else. Salvador, Parrothead, Jay Lee. Uh, Coach Loudy was up in here. Pursuing Paranormal. Uh, I want to make... Bo- uh, Brutal Morningwood. Uh, Brutal Morningwood, thank you. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, Darius Munchausen, Culture Casino, love you, man. Culture Casino needs to be back on this channel. I need to get Culture Casino back on here uh, on an evening stream uh, with me. So we're, we need to do that soon, Culture. I'll DM, I've been meaning to DM you any because I have some things I want to ask you. Uh, I, need some, uh, I need some of that, uh, that wisdom uh, and, and some of your knowledge, my brother. So thank you all. Um, Go subscribe to Culture Casino if you're not already. He's a wonderful content creator. Uh, does great videos, streams. Uh, you can catch him on Midnight's Edge a lot of times. Uh, he's all over the place. Pegasus Actual Podcast. Um, you know, subscribe to Angelus Draven. Uh, subscribe to Va- definitely subscribe to Vassy Reviews. Um, a lot of wonderful creators in this community. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for spending the past, uh, you know, I see I went over my time on the first day. This is like how my wrestling matches turned out because my intros were always so long. Uh, but that's it. I meet Temple Queen of the Place to Be Reviews. Remember, come back tonight at 8.30 uh, for the Groovinator Memorial Stream. Um, we'll be joined by, uh, it'll be myself, Tony Tone Def, uh, Nerdy Blurb TV will be joining us. Uh, Jeff from World Class Bullshitters will be joining us. Um, I, I'm not sure who else we got. Uh, we got a... Guess though, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to Linkelect Seven, uh, who was on the uh, on the um, Raiders of the Lost Flicks live Friday night with us, and also Nick Utam of World Class Bullshitters will be joining us as he streamed with us regularly on Friday nights. So that's it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, we're out of here. the uh, The initial uh, episode uh, was fun. Uh, hit that like button, and if you're watching this after the fact, enjoy. We covered three quick articles today. I will link those in the description. I'm Etapo Queen, the place to be reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, it's better to burn out than fade away. <laughs>